हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अर्पिता करवा डॉट कॉम इंडियाज फाइनेस्ट ऑनलाइन कोचिंग फॉर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर फ्रेंड्स टुडे विल बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग अ वेरी वंडरफुल पोएम बाय सिल्विया प्लैथ व्हिच इज टाइटल्ड डैडी नाउ इन दिस पोएम प्लैथ शेयर्स हाउ द स्पीकर्स फादर हैड अ स्ट्रांग इंपैक्ट ऑन हर लाइफ फ्रॉम अ वेरी यंग एज इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द पोएम she describes how the speaker's life felt like being inside a black shoe which shows how unhappy and trapped she felt and how she was always scared now as the poem goes on plat starts mentioning world war second which makes the poem darker and more disturbing the person speaking in the poem talks about how she was too afraid to talk to her father and this fear was so strong that she couldn't even say anything The father in the poem seemed to always use the German language which the speaker found harsh and hurtful and because of this the speaker began associating every German man she encountered with her father showing just how scared she was of him The opening lines of the poem read as You do not do you do not do any more black shoe and the closing lines are They always knew it was you daddy daddy you bastard I'm through Now I'll tell you the story in detail. So, Daddy is a pretty controversial poem by Plath, and the words are enough to make the readers feel her pain. In this poem, she writes about her father after his death, and this poem was written just four months uh, before the poet's own death by suicide. The poem is told from the perspective of a woman about her father, whose memory still plays an important effect in her life. The poet doesn't cry or lament over the loss of her father. Instead, she feels a sense of relief. The poet describes her father using different words, which gives us an idea about their relationship. In the beginning of the poem, the speaker tells us that her father is no more in this world and calls him a black shoe in which she had lived like a foot. She had been forced to live like a foot for 30 years and she grew up poor and pale under such oppression of her father. She had lived a life of suffocation and fear until her father's death. She had even wanted to kill her father, though he had died before she actually got a chance to do so. She calls her father as heavy as a bag full of god, which gives us an idea of her views regarding god, which is fearful just like her father. According to the poet, his dead body now looks like a huge statue who's enormous in figure and has no heart beating now. The speaker then compares her father with the freakish Atlantic Ocean. The word freakish refers to something very unusual and strange. Thus this implies that her father was a beautiful human being, but there was something strange about him. At some points during his illness, she had even prayed for his recovery. Then we see that the speaker wonders about her father's origin. She tells us that he grew up in a Polish town where he spoke the German language. The town that he grew up in had seen a lot of wars, but she couldn't recall the name of the town as it was not a common one. For this reason, the speaker could never remember where her father actually came from. She could never gather the courage to even ask him about it. She tells the readers that she felt as if her tongue had stuck in her jaw whenever she tried to talk to her father. Whenever she tried to speak to her father, her words were stuck and trapped. She viewed him as someone who was harsh and obscene just like German language. The speaker even says that she felt just like a Jew under the reign of the Germans. So this is an important comparison to demonstrate the oppression that the speaker faced under her father's guidance. It was an extremely painful experience just like the Jews had faced in the hands of the Germans during the Holocaust. She felt like a Jew being oppressed without a voice. Hence she says that she could relate to the Jews and considered herself as one. She says that her ancestors were gypsies. Gypsies, let me tell you, just like Jews were also oppressed by the Nazis. So she calls herself a half gypsy and a half Jew. The speaker says that she was always afraid of her father and she believed that he had something to do with the German air force. However, the speaker goes on to tell us that his words had no meaning and he talked nonsense. He was a symbol of fear with a neat mustache and bright blue eyes just like the German Nazis. She compares him with a German tank driver as she calls him a panzer man. 
Then the speaker compares her father to the symbol of swastik. The swastik is an ancient Indian symbol, which I believe you all know, but it was also used by the Nazis. Her father was a huge black swastika that covered the entire sky, blocking the light. Then she mockingly tells that every woman adores a fascist, someone who is cruel and oppressive. Women, for some reason, fall in love with brutes or people who are violent. Next, we see that the speaker imagines her father standing in front of the blackboard. Her father was actually a professor. He had a cleft in his chin instead of his foot. Here, the speaker considers her father as the devil. The devil is viewed as having cleft feet, and hence the speaker believes that the cleft in her father's chin should have been in his feet. His soul is dark, which makes him a black man. She says that her father had torn her soul and broken her heart. Even though her father was a cruel man, the poet did love him as a child. Her father died when she was 10. She had cried for his death until she was 20 years old. So in her adulthood, she couldn't continue to mourn for her father and ignore all the wrong things he had done. At one point, she even thought of killing herself in order to see him again. She tried committing suicide at 20 but was saved. The doctors had joined her back with glue and given her a new life. However, her life changed completely after this incident. The speaker also had created an imaginary model of her father who had a main camp look referring him to Hitler the author of main camp so friends then she talks about her painful marriage the man she had married had perfectly recreated the role of her father and she had not needed to be reminded of her father she imagines the relationship with her father as a telephone call which now she had ended forever by marrying a similar man the speaker says that she had been accused of killing her father however she explains that he had died before she could get the opportunity to do so she says that if people think she had killed one man she had actually killed two another one being her husband she refers to her husband as a vampire because he had drained out life from her In the concluding stanza the poet says that even though her father had died long ago his memory has been haunting her just like a vampire thus her father must be killed just like a vampire is killed that is with a wooden stake pierced through his heart she says that the villagers never liked him that means the people around her always knew about his character in the ending lines the poet says that although her father had been dead for multiple years it is his memory that had been haunting her throughout these years to prevent these things from happening the speaker had called him a bastard and moved on now some critical analysis uh, this work by plath is a highly emotive and complex poem which i'm sure you must have felt and it uses imagery and symbolism at many places to convey disturbing themes This poem is also a confessional piece where the poet writes down her intense feelings towards her father, her husband and the male figures in her life. Friends, now let us wrap up this lecture with the facts and quotes related to this work. The poem was written in 1962, shortly before Plath's death. However, it was published only in 1965 as part of the Ariel collection. Now let us see some important lines and stanzas from this work. They read as Daddy, I have had to kill you. you died before i had time marble heavy a bag full of god ghastly statue with one gray toe big as a frisco seal the next one reads as there's a stake in your fat black heart and the villagers never liked you they are dancing and stamping on you they always knew it was you last but not the least we have daddy daddy you bastard i'm through and we are through with this lecture also we'll meet soon in the next lecture until the time we meet next stay happy keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com